What's up guys? So it's been a minute. I did a comparison between uh, Lomochrome Purple and Lomochrome Turquoise. The first few comparisons that I did was in a studio setting and I, I photographed a rainbow of acrylic paints to kind of give a, a good idea of how each color was going to shift. This first comparison image is uh, basically like a, a makeshift color chart and uh, I just wanted to put something together that would give like a, I don't know, a baseline uh, to kind of compare things against. In addition to the, the color shifting properties of these films, they're also uh, variable ISO, meaning that you can shoot them between 400 and, and 100 without a problem, and shooting them at the different ISOs or, or rating them differently, giving them more or less light, can yield kind of different results. In this group of uh, images of the Capitol building, I wanted to take a look and, and see just how much the varying ISO uh, or varying the ISO uh, would really affect um, the, the end result. And you can see, you know, both follow kind of like the same trend. Uh, less light equals the more saturation and uh, more contrast, really. Uh, but when you start to overexpose the film, you know, while you're, you are bringing up the shadows here, um, you are also kind of like overexposing your, your highlights a little too much. Well, a lot of photographers will reach out and, and work with professional models to uh, get some portraiture work done. I have access to something that's way better, which is a, a tolerant wife who's supportive, but very unenthusiastic about modeling. Okay, so can you give me the most unenthused wife look? Isn't this it? Now, I really don't do too much editing to uh, Lomochrome Purple or Turquoise because uh, obviously they're, uh, they're specialty films and you're, you're kind of shooting to get a look. Um, the, the one thing I, I do normally do, if I'm shooting at uh, 100, um, I've had pretty good results overexposing a little bit and then bringing down the highlights. Um, sometimes on occasion I'll also maybe boost the, the vibrance just like a, a tiny tiny bit. Again, these films, they don't need much help. They, they are already pretty wild, so um, that's kind of what I do usually when I edit. Something else that I try to keep in mind is giving these films enough light without it's a delicate balance, you know, giving it enough light without blowing everything out uh, because they, they do have plenty of latitude, but I think th there is a, a dance that you have to do between your, your shadow and, and your highlights, um, especially if you're not going to do any post work. Also worth mentioning is, in my experience, shooting in overcast is not the best for these films. You're going to get the most vibrant colors and uh, I just best images, I think, when you have a sunny day, it's clear out. I mean, you can shoot in, in you know overcast days, of course, but I don't think it's as saturated, as vibrant, and I don't think they look as good. Now, you guys might be wondering why I haven't mentioned Metropolis, because Metropolis is kind of, you know, jammed in with, with all these weird films that uh, Lomography makes, and it basically it comes down to I really don't like it as much. Um, I don't shoot it as much. I, I don't care for it. Um, I have shot it a couple times, and I, I did do a whole film review on it, uh, which I'll link at the end here if you're interested in, in checking that out. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it just comes down to I really don't care for it as much as I do uh, Purple and Turquoise. So. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up. Um, hope you guys are doing well. And uh, yeah, until the next video, we'll see you. Uh, what kind of moron eats the food props? Uh. Mm.